The life cycle of yeast is very interesting. Yeast comes as a haploid organism, which means it has one copy of a chromosome. It comes as two mating types, mat A and mat alpha. So I'm illustrating chromosomes by the, this red and black line there. As a haploid, it can be stably maintained, and it will just divide and divide into a colony, and the alpha can do the same. However, one of the major advantages of yeast is that we can control whether it's haploid or diploid. So we can put these two cells together, and they'll mate, and make what's called an A-alpha diploid. So now we have a cell that's got A and alpha information, and it's got one chromosome from the A parent and a chromosome from the alpha parent. Now this is a stable diploid and can, again, cycle back and grow independently. But the beauty of yeast is that it can also be forced to undergo a process called meiosis, which is the formation of gametes. And that's just like when a human makes eggs and sperms. So the first thing that happens when you trigger meiosis is that the chromosomes actually replicate. So there are actually four copies. The process that I study is actually how these chromosomes find each other and then recombine. So something called a crossover happens where genetic material is exchanged between the two chromosomes. And that's one of the reasons you never look exactly like your parents. Then lots and lots of interesting chromosome mechanics happen, and the diploid undergoes the complete process of meiosis, which leaves us with four spores, or gametes, contained in an ascus. And we can study these four spores, first by taking away the ascus, and under a microscope, we can separate these four spores into four different places on a nutrient plate. And then these can be grown up and studied. And what we can tell then is that two of the spores will have A information, two of the spores will have alpha information. One spore will have the black chromosome, and one spore will have the red chromosome, and the two in the middle have what we call recombinant chromosomes. They have a little bit of red and a little bit of black. And how we get from here to here is what I study in my laboratory.